You think it's too hard to meditate? I can't meditate. When I try and meditate, I just sit there thinking. Well, I'm going to show you how to meditate right now. The solution is but a minute away. In this video, I'm going to show you how to meditate, give you some scientific undergirding so you know why you should meditate, and give you easy, simple to follow steps so that meditation can become part of your daily life starting from right now. First of all, here's that scientific information. One study conducted at the Ohio State University showed that regular mindfulness-based muscle relaxation exercises lowered the risk of breast cancer recurring. A different study shows that it helps your immune system, gives you better res re resistance to viruses and tumors. And the David Lynch Foundation conducted some fascinating experiments, I believe in Chicago, where a group of meditators were able to change the consciousness of an entire city, reducing the crime rate of that city. Bullshit, I don't believe that. Hey, it's out there. Google it, you can have a look for yourself. Crime statistics fell, violent crime in particular, suggesting that consciousness is non-local and if you affect your individual consciousness, you will affect consciousness itself, as if it's comparable somehow to the quantum vacuum that exists outside of time and space from which all matter emerges and perhaps consciousness itself comes from there, or perhaps there's some corollary between God, creation, consciousness. That's what I'm arguing, but you don't need to worry about that now, not when we're dealing with meditation for dummies. Now. The first thing you need to do is sit down quietly somewhere where there's a fairly decent chance of you not being disturbed. Set yourself a modest target, just perhaps five minutes. Now, how I was taught to meditate, I've been taught to meditate by a few different people, so I'm gonna give you a beautiful hybrid, a chimera, a meditative chimera of the whole bunch. Now, this is what I want you to do. Sit yourself down somewhere you're not gonna be disturbed. Sit comfortably. You can leave your eyes open for now. And while you're sitting there with your eyes open, looking at me on your phone or your laptop, it's most likely your phone, isn't it? Run a check for your body and see if there's any discomfort you're carrying abdominally or if you're holding any tension in your neck or your shoulders or your forehead or your jaw where I hold it. If you're suffering from some form of sickness, I would like you to bring your attention to that pain and discomfort, not to resist it, but to allow it to be there in your body. Recognize that you are seeing, take in the room that's around you now, and ask mentally, not out loud, you're not in that case, who is seeing right now? Now close your eyes. Having closed your eyes, I'd like you to listen very carefully. You might be able to hear the gentle buzz of electric lights, which should have been resolved. You might be able to hear the distant burr of an aeroplane or the sound of the people you live with or live nearby to. Think to yourself, who is hearing these sounds? Bring your attention to the way that you feel now. Start to feel your breath. Notice that in addition to my voice, you are occasionally aware of voices, or a voice at least, in your own head. The ongoing inner narrative. Why am I doing this? I should do that. I need to get that done. Why did that happen? Stay aware of those thoughts. Try not to combine with them. It's very easy to combine with thoughts, by which I mean you become overwhelmed by them. You know, see, when I meditate or try to enter a meditative state now, bringing my attention to my breathing, having done the vision and the sound and the feeling, I start to think, oh, I wonder if this meditation video will be good enough. Now, as long as I don't get too immersed in that thought and just observe it, I can still continue to participate. Ask yourself now, who am I? Don't need to answer that question. Just sit with the question for a moment. Be aware of your thoughts. Be aware of your thoughts as separate from yourself. That you are observing them. That you're able to watch them emerge and dissipate. And if you don't follow them or are combine with them, as I just said, the awareness remains constant. Bring your attention to your breathing. With mantra meditation, you might like to repeat a mental sound. I was recently taught, aham, aham. You don't need to say it out loud, you just think it. 
What usually happens with me is once I've achieved a state of some relaxation and I start to use the mantra, my mind strays either back to the sounds or the thoughts or the feelings in my body. But as we've already acknowledged, we are aware of this phenomena and therefore we are not entirely immersed in it. It needn't become the nucleus of our identity, the point of our perspective and attention. Keep returning to the mantra. Don't be irritated or agitated when you think up the thoughts. The mind does think thoughts. It's one of its little jobs. As long as you don't become irritated by it. Don't combine with it and follow it. Your awareness will remain constant. And we come to realise that awareness itself is discrete from this quality of thinking or feeling that all things are happening within awareness. Try now, just for five minutes, to practice meditation as I've taught you. Go through that routine and repeat mentally our hum, which I was taught is simply the sound of the breath. Right, so you can pause it for a while because I'm just going to sit here, all right? I've got stuff to be getting on with. I've got a lifestyle to live. When you've done it for a while, don't open your eyes straight away. I would suggest like five minutes to start. And you can increase to 10 minutes and then 15 minutes. The key thing is the awareness. And the function of meditation and the point of meditation don't occur in these moments of silence. It occurs in the rest of your life when you're in relationship with yourself and others and nature and the machine of society. If you cultivate this awareness, you recognize that you have more time than you thought you had when you, when someone agitates you or irritates you in the same way that the thinking did. You perhaps come to recognize that perhaps the awareness that they experience is not ultimately any different from the awareness you experience and that we're all very varying permutations of a broad oneness kind of a, a beautiful thought not to get too caught up in the commotion of the day but the meditation in a sense becomes the bedrock the ulterior baseline of your being as opposed to sensation the pursuit of pleasure and your beliefs about yourself which can be a difficult castle to inhabit and is often spoken of as illusory, the veil, maya, all things constructions, all things conceptual, all things temporal, but the awareness, I was taught, eternal, favour the eternal over the temporal, this is a way to freedom. There you go, so there's a little bit of meditation there, I hope that it's been of some use to you, you can follow me, Kancha, on uh, Twitter, if you're not doing that already, at Rusty Rockets, or on Instagram, watch out for my YouTube videos, I've been in lots more of these things, I certainly feel a lot more tripped out and meditative right now, thank you very much for joining me, remember to watch my little uh, show thing I do, have a listen to Under the Skin, see you later. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you might also like Is Mindfulness a Con? That was a good video. And What Meditating Every Day Has Done For Me. And the... Thanks.